Divya, the rainbow child, Shakespeare's Hamlet, that prince of Denmark, living in the lap of luxury, still laments, who would suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, if one could feel assured of peace and painlessness after killing oneself? Such is the state of despair to which mortals are driven in this age in spite of economic upgradation, technological progress and instant communication. Rare is a family totally free from major health problems, cancer, kidney failure, heart surgery, liver transplant, cerebral hemorrhage, paralysis, Parkinson's, mental disorders, and many others. How does a middle class family cope up with the cost and stress and suffering? How does even a rich family withstand the prolonged anxiety and the impending fear of death must all the families sink to save one soul therein? Other agonizing problems get allied and demand decisions, even as you are stranded between the devil and the deep sea. Tradition, ritual, religions, alternate medicine, each offers the best or the only way forward. Divya is the story of a young girl who is afflicted by cancer. But it is also your story and mine because we are all living without any concern for the loss of cosmic governance and divine justice. In our ignorance, we are innocent, but that does not eliminate the consequences because in our action we are guilty. We sin without knowing and suffer without understanding, says the sage Nisargadatta Maharaj. Our only hope is to stop, to look, to understand and to get out of the trappings of ignorance, avidya. That is why I have felt impelled at an age of nearing 90 to write my only novel, Divya. It is to show despairing humanity the direction to take to achieve renewed strength and redemption. Divya is a lovely, adorable, sprightly schoolgirl in her teens when she is diagnosed with cancer. She is from a middle class Brahmin family. Her grandfather is a retired headmaster and an intense spiritual seeker with deep understanding of Vedanta and other scriptures. He is Raman and Divya calls him Ramana Tata and loves him totally. The saintly grandfather knows too well that the sanctity and security of human life lies in its conscious identity with the divine and the mind is fulfilled only when it returns to the source. But only a few ripe souls can grasp, can even listen to the truth of God as one's own eternal potential. His wisdom tells him that Divya has the potential though young. So at every opportunity he expounds the essence of spiritual knowledge to her and she joyously soaks it up. 
she can. She loves to sit with Tata every minute she can and ask questions about the Creator and the cosmic creation, about karma that is destiny, about fate and free will, about luck and accidents, about life and death. She grasps the truth and glows like a comet. All the while, she is undergoing the best treatment which runs into tens of lakhs, but it is causing intense physical pain to the body of the girl and mental agony to the family. There are attempts to convert the family's religion by rich vested interests, which is India's tragic tale today. Grandfather has to step in to drive out the predators, also teaching them that the only meaningful conversion is from man to God, from the human to the divine. The child has a relapse even after prolonged chemotherapy and only imported cord blood at unaffordable expenses of another 2 million rupees holds out a remote hope. The parents are devastated, but Divya, though racked by pain, is serenely smiling. As not Tata revealed, you are not the body, you are the eternal spirit.